Hello everybody, my name is Jack Caravanos and I'm a professor at the City University of New York School of Public Health in New York City. And I'm here today to describe one of the worst cases of natural asphyxiation ever. It all started about 9.30 p.m. on August 21st, 1986, when a tremendous volume of carbon dioxide gas was released from Lake Nyos, a crater lake in the northwest part of the central West African country of Cameroon. Lake Nyos is 208 meters deep and is one of three known lakes in the world to be saturated with carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is naturally vented into the lake from deep within the Earth's crust and in addition to saturating the lake, it also dissolves to form carbonic acid. The exact cause of the gas expulsion trapped below the lake is not known, but geologists have theorized that it may have been caused by unusual subsurface heat a small expo uh, explosion from magma, or a geologic tremor. On that day, 1.2 cubic kilometers of carbon dioxide gas, which is enough to fill 10 football stadiums or 716 World Trade Center towers, was violently released from below the lake. The gas was released in as little as 20 seconds and was said to have caused a 100 meter or 300 foot wall of water and foam at the shore. Carbon dioxide is one and a half times heavier than air. So when the gas reached the surface, it followed the natural downhill terrain towards the villages of Nyos, Cha, and Sabun. People estimate that CO2 raced downhill at speeds of up to 50 kilometers or 31 miles per hour. The gas plume moved quickly, silently, and invisibly towards the villages. Carbon dioxide is not a toxic gas. However, when this gas, or any gas, displaces oxygen, then asphyxiation can occur. So as the plume moved downhill, it pushed aside normal air, which contains 20.9% oxygen, creating anoxic conditions. In this disaster, approximately 1,700 men, women, and children died of simple asphyxiation. Most died in their sleep as asphyxiation set in. Over 3,500 livestock also perished. By the time morning arrived, just about everybody in the plume's path died. With time, the carbon dioxide dissipated and atmospheric oxygen levels returned to normal. Afterwards, engineering controls were installed in Lake Nyos to vent the subsurface CO2 accumulation. The controls seem to be working. However, there's ongoing concern that the weakened earthen dam may rupture and flood the resettled villages downstream. Worldwide, geologists and environmental scientists have begun to identify other potentially hazardous volcanic lakes and institute preventive measures before this ever happens again. Well, thanks for listening to the presentation. Goodbye.